Shalom, shalom. Bru kabah b'shem, Yeshua. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and is and is to come. He is the Lord, God Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one, according to John 14 and 1 John 5, verse 7 in the King James Bible. I believe that God was manifested in the flesh, 2 Corinthians 5.19, that he lived a perfect and sinless life as the Lamb of God, Isaiah 53, and he gave himself as a willing sacrifice on the cross 2,000 years ago, and he was raised from the dead three days later. And if you repent, that means to confess and forsake your sins and follow him according to the scriptures, you could have reconciliation with the Father in heaven. Amen. But we must confess and forsake our sins and follow Christ according to his commandments. And then we will have a clean slate and receive the Holy Spirit so that we could walk in his ways and be born again from the inside out. Amen. Now today I wanted to talk about something that's not often talked about in the Christian community today, and uh, probably most likely not in any, uh, any Laodicean churches, uh, but I think it's a very interesting topic. I think it's important to understand also uh, because it gives us insight as to the angels of God who are present, I believe, during the time that we are praying and prophesying and we are being ministered to in the spiritual realms, I believe, by messengers of God. Okay, so this is something that's talked about in uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm going to go into some scripture about that, but... Basically, Apostle Paul tells us that when a woman is praying or prophesying, she should have her head covered because of the angels. Now, if you didn't have any understanding of Genesis chapter 6 and the story where the fallen angels came to the earth, they saw and lusted after the women of the earth, the daughters of Adam, so they came to the earth to make wives out of them, and they mated with them and created the giants, the Nephilim. Okay, so there we see that the angels of God, they were once good, but they saw and lusted after the daughters of Adam, and they left their heavenly habitations as referenced in the book of Jude and the book of Peter, okay, and they came to the earth. Okay, now those specific angels, they are locked in the bottomless pit. They are locked in the valleys of the earth. I believe some of them under the great river Euphrates, as Revelation 9 tells us. But essentially, some of God's angels, they fell because of the beauty of the woman. Now the Bible says that the glory of a woman is her hair. And so... I believe what Apostle Paul is telling us is that because of a woman's beauty, because of her hair, it entices the angels of God. And so when a woman is praying or prophesying uh, in the presence of these ministering angels, okay, it, is, it is out of respect to cover her beauty uh, so that she does not provoke God's angels to desire her. Okay, I believe that's what's uh, being talked about. So let's take a look at some scripture. Now here we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8, it says, 
For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 10, it says, For this cause ought the woman have to have power on her head because of the angels. Now, in, in context, this chapter is talking about a woman uh, praying and prophesying with her head covered. It says here, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 13, Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? And then it goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15, But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. And on the other side of the spectrum in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 4, it says, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Uh, I guess if she was bald. I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, that doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. But for some reason, uh, a woman, according to the Bible, is supposed to pray and prophesy with her hair covered, uh, because of the angels. So it, it makes sense to me that it's because a woman should not be provoking the ministering angels to uh, look at her beauty. That That's what I'm gathering from this chapter. And in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, that's the fallen angels, if you read Job chapter 1, the sons of God are the angels. It says the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So here we see that the angels of God saw and lusted after the daughters of Adam, and that's why they left their heavenly habitation. Okay, so I think that God... Uh, doesn't want any more of his angels to fall. He doesn't want to provoke uh, his angels to lust after the beauty of the woman. And it goes on to say, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, the fallen angels, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Okay, and then after this, that's when God flooded the earth because of sin and corruption. And the book of Enoch expands upon this and tells us that the fallen angels taught mankind all sorts of forbidden knowledge that corrupted mankind even more and made them even more evil. Okay, let's take a look at the book of Enoch. Now this is the book of Enoch, the R.H. Charles translation. Now this book is quoted in the New Testament in the book of Jude and it is also found with the Dead Sea Scrolls in the caves of Qumran in Israel okay and it is dated to at least before the time of Christ's birth now it says here in chapter 15 God is talking with Enoch okay the seventh from Adam he calls him a righteous man and a scribe of righteousness. And then God says, go to the watchers of heaven and intercede for them. And he tells them, he tells Enoch to say, wherefore have ye left the high, holy and eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of the earth and begotten giants as your sons. And though you, speaking of the fallen angels, were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those also who die and perish. Now you could obviously read the whole book of Enoch if that's interesting to you. I've listened to the audiobook several times. I think it is very edifying 
although I would be careful with some of the fragments from the book of Enoch, some of them actually do contradict what the Bible says. So just be careful in reading and listening to the book of Enoch, especially the scrolls or the fragments of the book of Noah. Okay, there's a possibility they could have been altered or changed within uh, 6,000 years, or rather the 5,000 years that they were written. Okay, now I believe that, you know, Noah was the great grandson of Enoch, and I believe that Noah took the writings of Enoch into the ark and then probably gave it to his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and then it was passed down to Abraham, I believe, and then to the children of Abraham, and then to the nation of Israel, okay? That is what I believe in, so I believe that was helpful. Now, I'm not here to condemn anyone uh, for not wearing a head covering, if you are a woman, uh, but, you know, it's definitely something to think about. You know, if God really does want uh, a woman to cover her head, not to provoke the angels, uh, you know, it's, it might be a good idea, <laughs> okay? That's just, that's my opinion. That's what I take from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I just wanted to share that information. I do believe the fallen angels, a different set of fallen angels, including Satan, will be cast to the earth very soon, according to Revelations 12, and uh, they will probably seek to mingle with the women of the earth once again. And of course, there's the demonic gray aliens, which I believe is a new hybrid species, a new Nephilim species as well. So just some food for thought. Hope to see you all in heaven very soon. The rapture could be any day. And shalom until next time. Amen.